Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, friends of pharmacies all around the world. Today is World Pharmacist Day. It's a day where we celebrate pharmacies across the nations of the world. And uh, today is 25th of September, and we are celebrating the 10th anniversary of World Pharmacist Day. Please just clap for yourself, celebrate yourself. It's wonderful being a pharmacist. And uh, this webinar has been put together by the Department of Pharmacy, University of Illinois Teaching Hospital, in collaboration with the Kwara State Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria and the Kwara Kogi chapter of West African Postgraduate College of Pharmacists. I am pharmacist Busayo Elebedi. I'll be moderating this program. The theme for the World Pharmacist Day for 2020 is transforming global health. And the topic for discussion this afternoon has been carefully selected. It is transforming global health, need for connected healthcare for patients in a global village. A very distinguished pharmacist in the diaspora has been saddled with the responsibility to speak on this very important topic. I'm referring to pharmacist Sarafa Din Adebayo. He is a professor of pharmaceutics and is well read in health informatics. He will be adequately introduced shortly. So before then, let me just quickly welcome uh, the management team of the University of Illinois Teaching Hospital, led by the Chief Medical Director, Professor A.D. Yusuf. We also have uh, in participation this afternoon, the Chairman Medical Advisory Committee, Dr. Aisha Saka. The WC Chairman Medical Advisory Committee Clinical, Dr. Odega. And uh, the Director of Administration, Mr. Odaibo. Other members of the top medical, uh, top management committee are recognized, professors, heads of department in the University of Illinois Teaching Hospital. We also want to recognize all healthcare professionals present. Uh, I want to welcome the national chairman of Association of Hospital and Administrative Pharmacists, Dr. Kinsley Amibo, who is going to give uh, a goodwill message subsequently as the webinar progresses. The chairman of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, pharmacist Jumwa Otelaja, fellow of the West African Postgraduate College of Pharmacists, will also be expected to give a goodwill message. So I want to seize this opportunity to welcome all men of honor, pharmacists all over the world that are on the platform this afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome. Before we kickstart the program, I uh, want to set some house rules. Uh, everybody participating will be muted. Uh, all question and answer comments will pass through the chat window. Participants who are interested in uh, the slides and record of the webinar should drop their email addresses for the slides. Uh, we'll be taking a good way message from the management of University of Illinois Teaching Hospital, and this will be done by pharmacist. This is Dr. Dekan. Oh, beautiful. So the chief, uh, the deputy chairman medical advisory committee, Clinic House, Dr. Odega is on ground, and we are so happy to have you, sir. So the floor is open for you to give your goodwill message. Hello, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Good afternoon or good day, everyone. 
Uh, I'm really pleased to be here. I'm happy to be associated with the World Pharmacies Day uh, 2020. Uh, like you know, the year 2020 is a very remarkable year and will remain so in history. Um, I want to uh, use this opportunity to highlight the very important roles that pharmacists play in nation building and also to underscore the very important roles that our pharmacists play here in UITH. I want to emphasize that you play very important roles in trying to provide health care to our teaming uh, population. And I want to uh, congratulate you on this very great day and to encourage you to keep the flag flying by increasing um, scholarship, research, evidence-based practice, and improve services to our people. I bring you greetings from the Chief Medical Director of the University of Illinois Teaching Hospital, Professor Adi Yusuf, and to uh, encourage all of us to recognize this day because it's also a day for reflection. Uh, the lecture will be coming on very soon and I look forward to it because it's going to talk on connected healthcare. And you have chosen a very erudite scholar to deliver this lecture. So I congratulate you on this very great day and bring you greetings on behalf of the Chief Medical Director and all the management staff or, and staff, all the management and staff of UITH. I say congratulations once again. Thank you very, very much, sir. We absolutely are glad that you are on the platform. Thank you so much, sir. Um, straight away, I would invite uh, Dr. Adiola Kola Mustafa, a pharmacist in the diaspora, who is going to do justice to introduce to us our guest speaker for today. Dr. Kola, it's over to you. Yes. Good day, everyone. Adopting existing protocols um, established by Dr. Elegbede. Happy World Pharmacist Day to all pharmacists in the room. I present the citation of Professor Amusa Sharafadin Adebayo. Professor Adebayo obtained his B Farm, MSc, and MBA degrees from the Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife, in 1989, 1995, and 1999, respectively. He went on to complete his PhD degree at the University of Ibadan in 2001, master's degree in health informatics from the University of Illinois, Chicago in 2020. Professor Adibayo started his career as a research fellow too at the Drug Research and Production Unit, Faculty of Pharmacy, Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife, Nigeria in 1992, and got promoted to research fellow one in 1995. His academic experience further spans from being a lecturer in pharmaceutics at the University of Technology, Jamaica, Kingston in 2002, Associate Professor of Pharmaceutics, University of Technology, Jamaica in 2008, and Roosevelt University, Schomburg, Illinois in, to, in 2011, to a full professor of pharmaceutical sciences at Sullivan University, Louisville, Kentucky in 2018. Professor Adebayo's research interests include one, dosage form design, bioavailability, bioequivalence, and pharmacokinetic studies, application of biopharmaceutics and pharmacokinetics principles in rational therapy of pediatric and geriatric patient populations through simulations and kinetic modeling, and application of smart biomaterials and pharmacokinetic principles in chromo chronopharmaceutics of time cyclic and physiologic cyclic conditions or disorders. Professor Adebayo has 
published and presented varied academic contents, received funded grants for, for research, and is a recipient of numerous honors and awards, which include Biggest Heart and President's Research Initiative Awards. Professor Adebayo also serves as a peer reviewer for several pharmacy journals. I have the honor of presenting Professor Adebayo as a guest speaker at today's clinical meeting to commemorate, commemorate the World's Pharmacist Day, organized jointly by UICH Learning Pharmacy Department, PSN Choir, and West African Postgraduate College of Pharmacists Choir Chapter. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ma. You're welcome on board, Professor Adebayo. For the Good afternoon. You're welcome. Um, pharmacists, home and abroad. I bring greetings from here on behalf of my colleagues in diaspora who are listening and watching us uh, on this important occasion of uh, World Pharmacy Day. It's a day in our lifetime as professionals and of our profession pharmacy that we cherish so much. Um, I want to thank the University of Illinois Teaching Hospital, uh, Department of Pharmacy, for their initiatives in getting these seminars arranged and uh, going through all the work requires to ensure it is uh, uh, implemented. Again, I want to thank the University of uh, Illinois Teaching Hospital Management all professional colleagues, pharmacists, physicians, nurses, uh, support staff in various capacities, the lab people, to recognize their importance in working as a team towards ensuring the health and safety of our people. It's indeed a milestone in the life of the nation, in the life of our profession, and in the light of the current challenges that we are facing as medical professionals. Thank you all for all you are doing with the little available and so much being achieved. Thank you. Uh, this presentation today, I'm going to structure it briefly uh, on basis of reflecting on pharmacists and the pharmacy itself, who we have, what we do, what defines us, and the health status uh, of our people, locally, nationally, and globally. You know, it's a challenging time, the time of COVID-19. And when you see everything that is going on around here, you agree with me that it's a different time that warrants different approach. I think that is basically what we are learning, if nothing else from this COVID-19 pandemic. The health status determinants, generally, I call it the irony of two words, same word. Previously, what happens in one country may not be a concern for another country. But now we see how the world has been uh, seamlessly connected in a way that what happens in UK requires maximum of six hours to reflect itself in Nigeria. Lessons from the Millennia Development Group, um, I mean, sorry, Go, the way the health community responded to it and how we should take this into what we do, even as we celebrate our day as pharmacists. The global village, the health disease and the care implications. And of course, the case for connected healthcare and the future outlook. Then I conclude with some of the important things that I think pharmacists uh, need to take away from this. Reflecting on the theme of this year's World Pharmacy Day, according to our DG, he highlighted it carefully that we are highlighting pharmacy as a profession to our stakeholders and celebrating our profession as members of that profession. It's an opportunity for us is so, to do so many things. How we are transforming global health, we want to I mean, bring that to the forefront, 
advising on healthy living, vaccination, ensuring safe and effective uh, use of medicine, what scientists are doing, what um, retail pharmacists and professionals are doing. Everything is interrelated in ensuring that we get the kind of healthcare delivery that people need in a timely manner, a cost-effective manner. So how do we do that moving forward? Knowing that the world is now a small village, different diseases, different locations, uh, definitely there is need for a change of approach. As a pharmacy uh, pharmacist, I cherish going back to this because it guides what I reflect as what we need to be doing as professionals, which is what we are doing essentially. What is pharmacy itself? We consider the health and science of preparing and dispensing medications, providing drug-related information to the populace. This is a key role. We produce, we dispense, and we inform. This, there are a lot of things that are embedded in those three things. And we shall be highlighting them as we proceed um, in this discussion. The profession that has responsibility for safe, efficacious, and economic and sustainable use of medicine. We see medicine have been available and they have been unavailable. We have them today, we don't have them tomorrow. They were effective today, they are not effective tomorrow. So this is a key role for pharmacists. Even as we are looking for new cure, we have to preserve what we have now. Because what we are fighting against, the monster that produces uh, health distortions, they are not resting or uh, slowing down on their pace. Is the professional responsible for the appropriate use of medication, devices, services to achieve optimal therapeutic outcome? This optimization of outcome is perhaps at the forefront of what we call the pharmaceutical care today. We want to see outcome in our patients that is attributable to our impact as carer, as clinicians. That has to be measured. It has to be documented. It has to be available for analysis so that those effects can be understood and can be rewarded as appropriate. Pharmacists specifically have been defined by several rules. Until 2012, are the um, Federation of um, FIP conference, International Pharmaceutical Federation in uh, Amsterdam in 2012, when the eighth star was hired to it. We used to be recognized as caregiver, leader, decision makers, communicator, manager, lifelong learner, teacher. And researcher was hired to it, knowing that moving forward, information is going to be key. We're going to need data. We cannot be treating cases haphazardly in order to avoid the embarrassment that we are going through with COVID-19. Uh, part of the, or what reflects to me, what is going on can be gleaned on the website. Just go there and see how different professionals, pharmacists, researchers are responding to it. Oftentimes, ginger by push from political hands. There's no unified way of moving forward because there is no best practice. There has not been documented evidences that we can draw on from the past to inform how we approach this particular pandemic. American Financial Association uh, issued their own, they said, health plans and benefit managers to increased length of uh, day dispensing. That was the first thing, because we we're afraid everything will be shut down. So patients should be able to accumulate more drugs during this time, okay? Following CDC recommendation. Right aid providing swabbing tests, CVS, mini clinic providing tests, no cost test for COVID-19, a better pharmacy college publishing guidelines, like many other college of pharmacy and professional associations, each one essentially targeting the immediate environment because of lack of information as to what is happening next door as at that time, okay? Pharmacy workers 
are facing risk of the disease themselves, just like the nurses and the physicians who are in direct contact with this patient, we may not know because it often appears as if pharmacy don't directly interface with patients. But what they go through in terms of getting what is required to make the treatment possible is one rose. I may not be shown immediately at the floor, but everyone was doing a lot of things which together is helping us until now. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, is a reflection of the world as a global village. It started like a joke late 2019 and became an embarrassment to the world. Current agents suggested for COVID-19 will show us how confused the world was. And up to now, there's still no treatment that is approved or is assured to treat it. You can only manage the symptoms and support patients with oxygen. Chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine, we had a lot about that. Vitamin D, dexamethasone, coronavir, avivar, Sputnik vaccine, uh, favipiraf, which essentially was the, uh, because of the coronavir and the Sputnik, because this has been used in Japan for viral infection much earlier. And all the other treatments that are, are being suggested with no evidence of whether they're effective or not. We just see some episodic data. Just suggest that they, they may be helpful. Um, the only treatment that FDA, US FDA has approved to date, not approved, endorsed, okay, is V, and it's on the basis of, they just authorize it for emergency use, okay, just to support treatment. So definitely, until today, there is no cure, okay. Um, moving forward, products of biological origins like um, convalescent plasma uh, have been suggested, and now Johnson & Johnson is announcing that they're going to conduct trial in the uh, US and South Africa and some other regions of about 60,000 people for their single dose vaccine. There's some going debate as to what is going to be the outcome of it. We are not sure yet because single dose, how is it going to be tested? How is the efficacy going to be proven? Are we going to challenge the uh, receivers of the vaccine with live organisms? I mean, uh, uh, live viral particles just to see if they are going to respond and be immunized against it or how, okay? So that is just in the front burner because it is the media problem we are facing and the world is responding to it. I must say that every member of the healthcare team, including pharmacists, have been very, very um, involved in getting the situation under control and doing their best just to guarantee the health of people and to reduce uh, death from this COVID-19 pandemic. Now, health status and determinants generally. I want to use US case and then use the uh, WHO developing region as case study of what constitute the health status and determinants. And those will reflect to us some of the areas where pharmacists have been uh, performing wonderfully well in helping patients and sustaining health locally, uh, nationally, and globally. In the US, we have various things that determine uh, health or health status. Life expectancy at birth is at about 79 point, I would say approximately 80 years, okay? Which again, varies across um, various groups, infant mortality and unintentional death, those are still major causes. And when you rank this from highest cause to lowest, we see heart disease, including hypertension, stroke, and coronary artery generally. You see cancer, you see stroke, diabetes, or Zimac disease. All these are still core determinants of health status. 
and pharmacists are doing their best to support patients and support other care professionals in making medications available and reviewing medication for efficacy or lack of efficacy, monitoring progress of patients on this kind of um, medications and suggesting alternatives as at when uh, necessary. Apart from the traditional role of even producing or supporting drug research, production, distribution, and safe handling, including storage and release, ensuring inventory supply, managing the inventory, ensuring that in and out is controlled in a way that they are not out of stock when the drug is critically needed. All these are activities pharmacists are performing that warrant commendation, but often taken for granted. Health status and determinants in the US continuing. We see drug overdosage death, which can impact and is actually impacting from the uh, effort of pharmacists. You need to, ma we're monitoring supplies of control substances and drugs that can be easily abused by ensuring adequate documentation, by watching out for uh, evidence of misuse or transfer of such drugs. Pharmacists ensure safety of patients by doing that. We cancel on team bath, pre-time single team bath, prenatal, postnatal care. Pharmacists are also involved. Use of tobacco products, canceling on the negative impact, childhood asthma, hypertension, obesity, like I've said before, diabetes, diagnosed and undiagnosed. We review medication to see what patient can use and they cannot use based on their underlying conditions. We know which drugs they should not take because they have hypertension. We look for substitutes that is suitable for the patient. We know patient that should take normal saline compared to one that should take dextrose or combination of these or other electrolytes based on our training experience and practice over the years. We are involved in vaccination for infectious diseases. There are countries where pharmacies can actually administer vaccines, which I think all other countries in the world should learn from if we truly want to expand the coverage. In the US, the coverage I mean, for 19 to 35 a uh, month post bath is still less than 80%. That is where resources are available. You now imagine where those are still very scarce or relatively unavailable. Uh, functional limitation is another gray area. People are getting older as life, uh, quality of life is improving. In the US is a major service area for pharmacists now where you have long-term care pharmacies where medications are prepared for home care, uh, nursing facilities, and uh, uh, small clinics. Cost related non adherence to prescription medicine. This is also a growing problem. And this requires attention of pharmacists to monitor, to follow up, to ensure that patients actually take the medication so that the uh, uh, benefit from the medication can be realized. But if they don't take it for lack of um, ability to afford it, then we cannot expect the outcome. If they miss doses, we've got to review it and see what needs to be done. Perhaps even change medication. If we fear that non-compliance due to cost will create problem. So pharmacists do all these kind of services. Now, when you look at the developing world, like I said, the irony of two words, you now have malaria, which thankfully is somehow controlled, or at least is, uh, its impact is significantly reduced, tuberculosis, HIV, AIDS, and other diseases that have even been neglected, like polio, river blindness, and conditions like that. Uh, pharmacists have done very well in proving that the fear in the early 20s, 2000s, sorry, that 
we may not be able to handle this kind of therapy, like uh, direct observed therapy for uh, tuberculosis or highly um, active combination therapy of artemisinin with other drugs for malaria. I mean, it was widely broadcasted in those days that the developing world will not be able to handle it. Well, through the effort of pharmacists, they step up their efforts. All hands were on deck and they set the ball rolling. And today we have seen significant improvement. And if you look at the millennial development goals, four, five, and six, you will see that health care segment of, of that goal is perhaps the most successful to date. So how did, that, how, how did we do that? Pharmacists contributed significantly to the success. We still have current ongoing challenges in public health funding, which again is impacting pharmacy as well as every other se sector of the healthcare delivery. Now, um, moving on to millennial development, I just want to highlight the success we have with millennial development goals so that we can learn a lesson as to how we can move forward together as a team in order to achieve success. Pharmacists can do more, they can do better. We can achieve significantly more if we are enabled. And how are we going to be enabled? We need partnership. We need collaboration with the other members of the healthcare team to, in a unified form and with a unified voice, move to the policymakers and see how we can influence them influence policy decision on health is going to impact drug as well as other factors of care. And without collaborative efforts, we will achieve very little. So let's see what happened with the Millennial Development Goal that led to the significant achievement that is recorded on healthcare part of it. In poorest country in particular, the so-called developing countries, significant uh, success were achieved on child mortality and maternal mortality. And some three major diseases that have been carefully highlighted, HIV AIDS, malaria, and tuberculosis. We all knew when HIV AIDS started, how difficult it was to get the medication, the antiretroviral, especially in the so-called, I mean, in the, in the less developed world, okay? But through policy, through influencing minds, we had generic companies breaking some of the protocols, producing those drugs for the developing world. That is why the story is where it is today. Nobody in the South-South developing world will be able to afford a vaccine for HIV virus per week of 2,000 US dollars. So without the policy, public mind changing and funding from the philanthropists, we wouldn't have been able to control HIV. So this is an example of how working together to influence public policy, influence public mind, opinion, I mean, towards health care as priority, not luxury, can help us move forward and help all health care workers achieve more as we move forward. So remarkable improvement was achieved on child mortality, even though there's still more to do, especially in the developing world, and maternal mortality, according to the UN uh, review as of 2015. And at least 8.8 .8 million additional uh, child deaths from the baseline before 2000 has been experienced or witnessed. So all this suggests to us that if we adopt the approach by this um, head group, the board leaders who went directly into action to ensure that we're able to implement the health sector uh, goals of the Millennial Development Goals, help us achieve this outcome. So the leaders are innovators, they contribute to changing public mind, policies and financing. Those are the three things we need to change and need to work together towards achieving. 
The result was that the public health community organized highly professional, accountable, transparent, and successful response. Basically, the approach was this. We have shared goals and metrics. We have to measure. We have to have goals. We have to backcast. We have to look at the future. Plan from the future backwards. Connect the future to today. Imagine the future we want to see. And then work on what we have today towards achieving it, especially as we got policy. We can't wait for things to happen and then scramble to control it. That will lead to confusion, we lead to embarrassment, we lead to looking at ourselves as medical professionals are helpless in the face of suffering populace. We need adequate funding. That was another aspect of their approach. They had national policy uh, and the, the implementation goals were crafted. Evidence-based advocacy. Advocates, show me. Documents, this is how we do it. This is what we got. If you get this, we can do this. So evidence-based advocacy, people will listen. But as a unified force, healthcare delivery team, we can achieve more than individual professional going forward, cap in hand, to beg the leadership. Apply research. This is huge. Applied research, monitoring, evaluation, and technology. And that's why I'm talking about connected healthcare. Which I'm going to move on quickly so that um, I don't take too much of your time. So need for connected healthcare. Connection in this case is not just wireless connection. I'm not talking about phone call or video call connectivity. Those are important and they're actually contributing significantly to patient care and patient engagement. But I'm talking also about professional connectivity. Nurses, doctors, pharmacists, lab people, everybody being on page as we look at the patient or condition in front of us. And this will be easier if we can all see the same thing at the same time, which is made possible by technology today. Now, connected healthcare, before I go into the technology itself, why do we need it? Why do we need to advocate and struggle and strive hard to get it? It is pay off in the G7 countries, including the US, because if you follow the national, I mean, international um, health status analysis, you will see that healthcare delivery has been inequitable. It's not accessible to everybody even in the developing world. You have rural people that are difficult to reach. You have the underserved, you have people who are uninsured and cannot pay for usual or regular treatment in the hospital or cannot even afford to go to the hospital. Okay, so it's not just a developing world or I mean less developed world, it's happening in the developed countries as well. But the G7, they benefited significantly from the application of health technology. It wasn't easy, reluctance was there from healthcare professionals themselves, but by policy and uh, policy changes, they are getting there. And adoption in the US is significant. But like before I go into the detail of the technology itself and what it can do for us, I just want to quickly um, let us know uh, what I mean by the global village and the need for connectivity. So I'm going to use this map quickly. You see the Helicobacter pylori migration. It took decades or century to move from region to region. As you can see the map, I'm talking here from 10,000 BC, from somewhere, uh, I mean, during the colonization, to 1520, 1850 BC. And from somewhere in Bantu homeland in Africa, moved towards South America, and then North America, and then South Africa. All this took hundreds of years, okay? But today, 
I mean, that is the time you have to travel on ship, or probably ride on horse, or probably walk to cross boundaries. Today, high and increasing mobility of our patients is being witnessed. Super high transmission rate of modern infectious diseases have been recognized in the past. We saw the SARS, H1N1, we saw the Ebola. Okay, now, what lesson do we draw from this? Medical community need to respond. An urgent problem requires an urgent solution. And how do you move on that? We need to respond with remotely accessible records and medical history for continuity of care and care beyond borders. You see the irony of two words. The major determinant of health or what we consider disease in the advanced country is different from what we consider as urgent disease in developing world. But patients are crossing seamlessly. So it simply means that if that condition is not endemic in the area you are going, the chances is that it will take hours of testing and diagnosis and duplication of things you have done at your point of takeoff, because they can even start to think of how to treat you if that treatment is available. But with technology, you have records that follow the patient everywhere. A patient involved in an accident, the first responder that get there, be a nurse or a doctor, can use phone to access the medical record of the patient and know if it is ABO or uh, what kind of blood this person can get. That in the past will require testing the blood in the lab. Oftentimes, those patients are dead before you reach the hospital for a scene of accident. So it simply means that we need record that is remotely accessible. We'll be increasingly moving from personalized to generalized physicians or clinicians. Every doctor should be able to treat every patient with the abundant information that's going to be available seamlessly to them. Because you know basically what to do. Plus, clinical decision support is coming in form of electronic access to information and best practices. So you see the patient problem, you have the record, you have the history. Natural language uh, processing, search the information for you from the database, not online, from the database of best practices and tell you what you should do exactly. You will save that patient immediately, even if you are a gynecologist and you are facing a cardiovascular patient in critical need. That is how connected health is going to help us. Um, this is just a continuation of what I was saying on the other page. So COVID-19, you see the distribution starting somewhere in uh, Asia. You see the density in Europe. That was as of March 2020. Remember, this condition was first reported in late 2019. So you now compare that with a condition that takes centuries to even spread from one region to the other. So COVID started Within three months, it permeated the entire world. So that shows that it's not just a concern for one region of its own problem, but a unified concern of every region for every other region's problem. All right, so we're going to need information that is shareable, that is connected, that help us to make informed decisions. And so why connected healthcare? We can't transform global health if we don't have access to global information. That is reasonable. We need patient-centric care. You have to treat the patient in front of you. You need information on that patient. Population information at times may not help some conditions. Accessible records, affordable care, equitable, effective, safe, efficient, cost-effective. Traceable. Somebody should be able to look at the record and see where the treatment ends sometimes. It should be able to trace it, including medication. Now we have barcoding, we have national drug codes, we have ICD codes, 
We have various code that we use to document lab, document drug, document diseases. So with all this being accessible to clinicians together, they have a unified view of the patient and everybody can do the same thing on a particular patient. Working on the same record, you are editing the records real time and sending medication order to pharmacy. Pharmacy is responding because of uh, suggested clinical decision support that, oh, this medication is not going to work for this patient, or this patient is going to be allergic to this medication. And doctor is changing in real time. Within a few minutes, five to 10 minutes, all those is accomplished. In the past, somebody will have to take the file from pharmacy back to doctor, doctor to pharmacy to lab, before that can happen, okay? So we need this connectivity to be proactive in preventative care. Of course, another big area is the disease registry for public health care. Disease registry will be able to access information from electronic health record or medical health record of patients. Just like through the accessible internet-based or cloud-based data, registry could pick information for EHR. EHR users can pick information from uh, disease registry, from public health records. So all these are ways that connectivity will help us. So be able to avoid medication error proactively as well. So moving forward, health information technology is crucial. That is the bottom line. And its nature is such that it will help us reduce unreadable confusing prescription of the past that has led to medication error, fast and instant access to pharmacy and other records, comparing prescriptions that might interact in unwanted ways, reducing duplicate orders and tests, and saving costs and time, enabling other formats that can be I mean, predetermined. There's no guesswork. You now know what will be needed by the pharmacies to make informed decision on patient dosing. We need, the, the lab need what doctor will need to diagnose. So the form is there. So you have to get all those information before you can send it to doctor or before you can send it to pharmacy. So with all this uh, possibility, it simply means time wasting, uh, insufficient information, error in treatment will all be avoided. I know people will be thinking, how are we going to afford this? Does it know we don't have electricity at times? I tell you, there are so many opportunities to get this started. And like I've said, if we know it as a problem, and we realize it as a necessity, and we move forward as a unified force, we'll get policy changes, that will start the ball rolling. Trust me, if you make it a priority, it will work. So all this um, I think I've touched already. Let me just move on to the basic um, health technology that we will need, essentially. We will need electronic health record or medical record. That's it. I, I would say that is the fundamental basis of everything. That's where day-to-day -day treatment will be documented and information we already have may be converted into electronic format, digitally converted, and if not um, amenable to editing, at least be available for referral, um, um, reference. So computerized provider order entry, we will have barcode medication administration, which will limit the error in drug selection. If you enter some drug now into the electronic record or electronic medication record, you will see a lot coming to you tell you that it's a wrong drug. Or you type the code wrongly, it populates another drug. You know that's not the drug you're looking for. So if we are writing that on paper, it will go before it's detected at the pharmacy. Again, waste time. And if it's not detected, too bad, patient will suffer, right? All those can be averted now. Pharmacy IT, electronic medication and admission record, electronic prescribing record um, or, or software, and image and um, like uh, scans, MRI, CT scan, all of them can be transferred now. We have limitation in the past because of the Wi-Fi and quality of video, but those are now being, uh, have been significantly improved and they are making the transfer of large volume of data 
in uh, editable form possible. Okay, so, so. Um, like I said before, electronic health record will contain virtually everything, everything we need on patient, and we allow, it will allow, allow seamless access to evidence-based tools, best practices that have been documented, and will guide how we move forward in treatment. It will automate and streamline workflow of all clinicians, enable creation and management of health information by authorized providers. It's not just everybody will be able to access it, but you have to sign on to encrypted, protected computers or other devices before you can access it. So information is protected, okay? Information is gonna be shareable. Like I said, everybody's gonna be able to access it and work on it at the same time for faster treatment. So EMR will also allow pharmacy to access preloaded medication dispensing cabinets at say, for instance, care facility, nursing facilities, and you can see what is happening to it. We have received call in the past where nurses will tell you, I can't locate this medication or it's not available. We say, oh no, you go on the computer at the pharmacy, you check and you can tell them exactly how many units are available and where they are available, okay? So the software will automate the process of distributing, tracking and reordering medication in a way that will help us to keep track of what is happening to medication, even at a remote location from the comfort of a pharmacy. Um, there will be possibility of integrating what is present in cabinets with what uh, is available at the pharmacy. So we can monitor inventory and control the flow of medication. So in summary, EMR will help us with enabling our patient to receive the right medication at the right dose for the right route, for the right time, and we're able to correctly document so that we can have access to this information anytime, every time, the same information. It's also going to enable error minimization because of the integration of the system. Everybody will see what is going on. So error will be avoided. We'll be able to alert or notify caregivers when medication treatment or care are missed. Because it will show that something is not being used at the right time or we are missing something. Barcode scanning, we correct medication, we confirm that medication is correct each time before the nurses hook it to the patient uh, bed and start to administer. Just like it will help pharmacies to ensure that medications are properly uh, shaved and there's no mix up or confusion. Okay, so moving forward, I want to talk briefly, just briefly about electronic um, edge record and clinical decision supports. The support itself is like something that guide us or alert us to what we should do or what we should not do as we start to enter a particular condition. You cons just consider the autocorrect or autocomplete um, facility that we have, say, on email, when we are typing email or entering things in Microsoft Word. So those have been uh, perfected in form of picking information from database, from the information archive, where those have been preloaded. And each time we start something, it search quickly and tell us whether it is right or wrong. So it's a technology that will prompt us to do certain things or not to do certain things. So presently we have what you call the um, knowledge base or rule base, which is pre-programmed into the system. Oh, if patient A is on drug uh, B, you should take drug C. Okay, those are the kind that we have presently. But artificial intelligence is producing what we call the uh, knowledge base information where it's like machine thinking or extending the information to proactively tell us if a patient presents with chest pain, best practice suggests that you give aspirin within 30 minutes of arrival at the clinic. So that is not looking at what you are giving already, but give, looking at what you should give if this is the condition. Okay, so that's the knowledge-based kind that clinical addition support is going to provide us or is actually providing. 
uh, to some extent presently. So yep, about uh, five minutes. Sir. Five minutes. Okay, I'm almost done. Thank you. Okay. Now, um, so another way the connected healthcare is going to help us if we are able to implement electronic medication um, record, electronic health record, is ability to uh, exploit the uh, the pervasiveness of smartphone now. Smartphone technology is now making video calling possible. So apart from just hearing our patient, you can actually see what is happening to them and guide them on some mm -hmm. uh, way of managing themselves. And at, at advanced level of it, you actually have devices that can be implanted on patients that will collect information through Bluetooth and send it to the server. So mm -hmm. doctor can be alerted when these are getting out of hand and respond to the patient in real time. But well, that is at the extreme of it. That is not very common now. But with the handheld devices and the quality of video through Scribe and uh, all other software that are coming to life, we should be able to uh, connect and engage our patients more in what we do as we treat them. The permissiveness to wider population will support access to care and resources by patients and by providers alike. So development will facilitate patient engagement in their own health and family members can also help them because it will be easier to guide them on what to do with the available communication uh, system. So I look at it before as around clinician looking at this, essentially patient is going to occupy that central role or central position where we can then treat each patient uniquely uh, according to their specific data and information. All right, so um, in conclusion, pharmacists, the health of the nation is on our shoulder. No ingredient, no soup. So there's no care we talk about that are not going to need medication. If you don't produce it, we source it. If you don't source it, we store it. If you don't store it, we dispense it. At any rate, we do most of this almost all the time. So this suggests to us that uh, our effort is critical and we need to do more in that area. So we continue to make incredible impact on local, national, and global health. Continue success we need for health professional to learn from what we call the uh, health sector's approach to millennial development goal. How did they achieve the success that we achieved, even in regions where it was like hopeless when the goal was passed in 2020, 2021. So coordinated action towards affecting policy changes, funding and people's mind is all we need. And this is not a time to work as individual or as segment of F uh, care delivery. We have to work as a team and look to policy changes, look for funding and influence public minds and mind of the leaders so they can pay attention to what is going on. We need connected healthcare of professionals, practices and infrastructure. It's not going to be just my hospital alone. Hospital have to interconnect because patients will be transferred from one to the other. They have to be connected across border because patients are going to travel and that travel may be sudden and the need to care may be, I mean, to care them may be, may, may be urgent. So with all these, connected healthcare is a necessity. Um, health information technology is crucial ingredient for connected healthcare. And so, like I said, with artificial intelligence coming to the foreground, uh, it's better experienced than imagined. Already we are hearing about telemedicine, telesurgery, teleradiology. So all these are some of the important ways connected health care is going to help us solve problems. Of course, public and population health records, data mining and research are also going to be possible. And success requires that no one is left out. Thank you. I put in some appendices on how Millennial Development Goal was achieved and then some key ER systems and how 
technology was adopted in the US and the challenges they faced. We can learn a lot of lessons from that. And of course, my references, and thank you for your attention. Thank you very, very much, sir. Applause, yes. I can see Dr. Felicia Williams clapping there. We sincerely appreciate you for the deep insights which you have shared this afternoon on uh, connected healthcare. We thank you so much, sir. Uh, while the lecture was on, uh, we located the Deputy Chairman Medical Advisory Committee of University of Illinois on training, Dr. Adeniro. We recognize you, sir. Good afternoon, you are welcome. We also want to appreciate uh, the colleagues, our colleagues from uh, Kingston, Jamaica, and other pharmacists in the diaspora. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Quickly, we want to take comments and, um, and questions. Do, if you have any comments, Please quickly raise your hands. Comments, questions. Okay. Prof, could you stop sharing your slides? Oh, okay, sorry. Professor, okay, yes. Okay, please, can you please help us unmute Dr. Williams? He has a comment. Oh, sorry. Uh, let me unmute. I'm sorry. I don't you have two minutes, Ma. Please unmute yourself. We want to appreciate um, President Musa for this beautiful work. Pharmacists are everywhere contributing whatever they can to transforming global health. Of recent FIP launched 21 um, development goals that are in line with the UN. 17 development goals. This is a fine strategy that pharmacists are putting in place to ensure that health globally is transformed. And part of that uh, development goals include equity and equality. When it comes to access to health care and access to medicine, we see this as a big challenge. Patients will have access to their medications and even their access is their equality. Is there equity? Another area that was also mentioned for this transformation has to do with uh, development, capacity development. As pharmacists, we are lifetime learners and we must go with the trend. What are we doing to ensure that we continue to develop ourselves continuously? And those goals are built on practice, science, and education. The workforce must be carried along to be developed so that all of us as a group, as pharmacists, as healthcare workers, can contribute to transforming uh, global health. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma. We appreciate you for your comments. Please, we are still awaiting other comments and questions. Uh, while we are waiting, I uh, want to invite uh, pharmacist Juwan Otelaja fellow of West African Postgraduate College of Pharmacists, the chairman of Pharmacy, Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, Kwara State, to give his goodwill message. Is pharmacist hey, manager? Oh, we are so glad to hear from you. A hey, very good afternoon to you, to everyone on this, um, platform. Happy World Pharmacist Day. I'd like to appreciate uh, Professor Sarah Fajin Adebayo, who incidentally was my lecturer in pharmacy school of Bafe Maolo University. Thank you so very much for this scintillating lecture. And uh, I'm sure everyone has learned one or two things. Our role as pharmacists in, in uh, managing global health cannot be overemphasized, and that's been the crux of today's 
World Pharmacist Day, that and everyone, everyone across the country as and across the world has been doing one or two things to let people know uh, more. About Pharmacies, the expanding role of pharmacies, and what we can do, and what we should be allowed to have in Nigeria, the erosion rights, and to take our place effectively is capacity building. Pharmacies also need to learn more get to develop themselves in several other areas of special, specialization and become experts in their own niche area. And I believe that that is um, how you get to be respected. And it's, it will also aid in collaborative healthcare. We are the physicians, we are colleagues, and we are all working together for our patients. So I believe this beyond the sky is our limit. I want to thank you all. Unfortunately, I'm not in a lorry. Um, I'm not in a lorry to celebrate the World Pharmacy Day with you all, but um, I'm actually on the road now to the airport. So I wish you all um, a very good afternoon. Thank you very much once again, Professor Adibayo. God bless you. Thank you so much, uh, Pharmacist Jumo Telaja, the current chairman of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, Kwara State. Thank you for that goodwill message. Uh, we also want to invite uh, Dr. Kingsley Amibo, is a national chairman of the Association of Hospital and Administrative Pharmacists. Is he around? Dr. Amibo, are you on board? Please, you can unmute yourself. It's not around. Okay, thank you very much for that information. Uh, do we have any other comments before we call pharmacist Susan Ayetoro, who is going to give the vote of thanks and appreciate everyone on board? Please don't forget to drop your email addresses for the slides and record of the webinar. Hey, just send it to me. Okay, pharmacist, I need to, you can unmute yourself. Okay, I think I have done it. Okay. Are you hearing me? Yes, yes. Okay, good afternoon again, everybody for attending this webinar. It's a fine one. We are all celebrating. First of all, I want to appreciate God for today. And I want to thank our keynote speaker, Professor Amusa Adebayo for coming to educate us on what we should know and what we should do, and how we can progress in our practice. We really thank you, we appreciate you. We put uh, one uh, time before, we change it again. You change with us. Well, that means you love us very well. Mm -hmm. So we love you too. We thank you so much. And I want to appreciate uh, the management staff of UITH that are here. Dr. Luz Odega, we thank you, sir, for staying with us from the beginning to the end. God bless you, sir. And we want you to uh, uh, help us thank the chief medical director of this great institution for all things that we have been doing for the pharmacies. We thank Dr. Adeni and the deputy C. Mark. I think he, he has left, but we thank you for staying for, for a while. I also want to thank uh, the pharmacists from Lagos, the pharmacists uh, from all over the world that has joined this webinar. By Dr. Margaret Obono, HOD, Bobby Orthopedics, thanks for coming. And uh, the chairperson, I have legal stage, Dr. Nedo. I can see you. Thank you for coming. 
Dr. Lubusola Olugake, or uh, the National Secretary of West African Pulgari College of Pharmacy Nigeria chapter. We thank you for coming. And uh, all other people that I cannot mention here, uh, Chairman PSN, Pharmacist Juma, he had to travel to Imo State to for a barrier program of one of us. We thank you that as you are coming, you also mm -hmm. identify with mm -hmm. your state. Thank you. God bless you, sir. Everyone that has made today a glorious day, we thank you. I won't forget you, our sister in diaspora, Dr. Kola Mustafa. How are you over there? We thank you. Everything that you have done for us, we appreciate you. Our moderator, Dr. BJ Elegbede, thank you. Dr. Bello, we thank you. Everyone that has listened, that has stayed in the end, we appreciate you. And I wish you happy World Pharmacist Day. See you again next year by the grace of God. Thank you all. Thank you so much for joining oh, us on this platform today. Yeah. We appreciate everyone. I'm also hey. waving to my Just chairman. To Wish you joy in pharmacy. I you want to tell her. We appreciate you all. Pharmacy coming not all the way from Florida. We thank you. Pharmacist Dr. Adiola Kola Mustafa, you are wonderful. We are meeting you and hoping that you come back soon all the way from Saudi Arabia. Ah, I can see Thank my you. wonderful friend, pharmacist Lola Dasbury. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate you. We appreciate everyone, everyone, everyone of God for making this uh, webinar a success. Thank you so much. May God bless you. Thank you. Don't lie. Good health. We will uh, we'll celebrate more World Pharmacies Day by the grace of God. Bye. Happy World Pharmacies Day. Thank you. Bye bye. God bless you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Have a nice weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Help us to appreciate Prof. Of course. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you, everybody. If I must see you later, I should go. Thank you so. Thank you so much. Everything was because of changing time. That's I know. Many of now ongoing. I know, I know. It's, it's, it's our day, you know. <laughs> it's in, I mean, I won't call it now. <laughs> That's it's our day. It's our day. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Thank you so much for your efforts. You got the message. Congratulations. You're doing a lot. You're doing a lot. Thank Thank you. You. <laughs> Thank God. We appreciate that. Bye bye. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah.